Those who can see beyond this color, they're going to see the color of Allah. Sibhatullah. So whose color are you taking? You think you want to take the white color? It's from this world. Everything from this world is lowest of the low. You want to take from the black color, it's from this world. Lowest of the low. You want to take from those ones who are with Allah. Don't you know, Turkish saying, if you have two roses next to each other, different color, they start to take each other's color. We want to be with the awliya Allah because they have the color of Allah. And we want to take that color. The only power in the world that was able to make this happen for hundreds of years were the Ottomans. For the love of Allah and His Prophet alone, not because of race or nationality, <coughs> they take the color of the Prophet. And the empire stretch from the Balkans to Western China to Africa to the steppes of Russia. In all Muslim countries, there were Muslim from the Mughal India all the way to Southeast Asia, they take bayat to that Khalifa. And those who are directly under them, they start to take each other's color. What happens when you start doing that? You become like what Allah says. You become like a light. You become like a light in a, in a niche. You're neither east nor west, but you're bringing light everywhere. That was the only time when it was an experiment that was our right and that was how the world was moving for hundreds of years. Because they were not going for nationalism. They were not going for tribalism. They were not looking for skin color. They were looking to please the founding of Istanbul was to please the Prophet. The founding of Istanbul was so that Sultan Mehmed Fatihan saying, now I stand in front and I will destroy everything that I conquered just to get one smile from your rosy, rose face. Eh? Just to get one smile from your rose face. They were, that was the reason for the founding. How beautiful, how noble are deeply spiritual. That's why the foundation, they had to turn over the whole world to destroy that. It's not destroyed, it's veiled. And Allah always fulfills His promise that it's going to come back. Where are we when it comes back? How are we going to be active when it comes back? Just to say, I'm Ottoman, I'm Osman, like some foolish ones. They're saying, eh, you have no right to use that word. You have to take it down. <coughs> we are the Osman the Derga. Say, Subhanallah, you become like Yahudi, huh? What happened? You trademark that name? You patent that name? The word Ottoman itself is to say anyone can be. Even if you are Yahudi, you're Ottoman. Even if you're a Christian, you're Osman. You're black, you're Osmanda. You're white, you're Osmanda. And now you're limiting that? Yeah, yeah, that is showing how Osmanda you are. Or that is showing how you're becoming a traitor to the legacy of the Ottomans. So, what is it? Just to dress up, just to say this or to say that? Not even if you study the history books 1,000 times, you're going to get the spirit of the Ottomans. If you're not sitting with that one, who has the color of the Ottomans, who have the perfume of the Ottomans. Correct? <coughs> ah. I was just remembering today because I was cleaning my room a little bit and I saw again a, uh, a dagger. It was a bayonet that one of our brothers gave me some time ago. And it was a bayonet 
that was from the time of the Ottomans in the Battle of Chanakala. They not that knife that they put at the end of the uh, long gun that they have the rifle. And take it out and see how beautiful they have Bismillah Rahman Rahim on it, they have the two rights, they have everything in there. Because what the Ottomans did was their life in this dunya is connected to Ahirat. You're in the military, it is connected to the Ahirat. You're a shepherd, it is connected to the Ahirat. You're a politician, it's connected to the Ahirat. Every profession, there is always a peer <coughs> of that profession. So there is no separation. Like what we talked, heaven and earth separation. There is no separation. There are bridges. We're not saying they're the same, but they are bridges. So I was looking at that bayonet. I was thinking. This is from the time of the Chanaka. Hmm. How honored we are to hold that. Oh, of course we have to say this because the Battle of Chanaka is coming, no? I forget. Then I remember mm -hmm. Shaykh and his time is coming to the point of the Ottomans. The color and the smell that our Shaykh is giving to all of us from beyond the mountain of Kaf is still standing and giving to those who are asking. Because until the Ottomans come back, there's no <coughs> peace in this world. There's no justice in this world. I was remembering how Shah Afendi, he was given. You remember? There was this very one saintly looking old man, clean face, so much light from his face. And it was a very old man. And but he was standing still, very strong, trying to stand very strong and firm and brave. And he was one of the survivors from the battle of Gallipoli, of Chanak. And he was given a medal by the Osmanli government. And to cut a long story short, he looked at our Sheikh and he says, this is for you, giving Sheikh Fendi that. Because our Sheikh was a Ghazi. He got all the titles too. He was a Ghazi and he was also a Shahid. Of course, some, their spirituality is, mashallah, flying so high. They even, uh, they're sitting in his presence for years, sitting with us for years. They even doubt whether he is a Wali or not. Yeah. But they look like very Sufi in front of people. Hmm, very nice. Who are you trying to fool? So that one gave, that saintly man gave Sheikh Afendi that medal. And meaning that he's saying, you, all the martyrs of Chanakala, they have chosen you also, and it is as if you have fought in that battle. They have accepted you. So that battle is coming near, the commemoration of that. We have to fight that battle every day. Karbala is not just once a year uh, coming, everyone is hitting themselves, everyone is crying. The rest of the day, what you you're jumping up and down in clubs. Karbala is happening every year. But Karbala is also happening every day. Every day, if you are not fighting with your ego, if you're not fighting against to the Yazid, if you're not fighting against to the, uh, let's say, hmm? eh? ship ship? If you're not fighting against, let's say, the Anzac, <laughs> you understand? If you're not fighting against to your ego, then you're not preparing yourself for the Ottomans to come back then you have no right really to commemorate that. It's just for show. Because they fought for something. They gave their lives for something, for Islam. What are we doing for Islam? It's not to go here and to go there and to go there and to fight physically also. There is no permission for that and it's all crooked. Somehow, somehow it is crooked. But are you fighting against your lower self? Start with that 
and be busy with that. The order is for us to do that first. May Allah forgive me, inshallah, and bless you. Al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum.